We are here this morning, and we would like to thank all of you for coming this morning to celebrate with us this occasion, to pay homage to our fallen brothers, which has dedicated the ultimate sacrifice. Their names are Ronald C. Hurst, Gus Stovall Jr., David L. Owens, Norman C. Ferris, and James C. Starnes. We would like to thank you again, as I said, for coming out to be a part of this occasion. And at this time, we would like to introduce the Reverend Dr. Bobber E. Headley to give us a moment of prayer. Good morning. Will you join me in prayer? Prayer that has been so integral in the life of our military and of this country. Let us pray. Eternal God, we gather here today to remember those who have served our nation and those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, their lives in service to us. We gather, O oh God, to recognize the service of them and others who have given so that we may live free. We gather here to give honor to those who have died, but also those who serve and have returned home from service. We gather together to honor our veterans and all those who wear the uniform. We gather here today to pray, to remember, to give thanks, and to honor those among us who have and are serving our country. May your presence be in the midst of all that is said and done here today. In the name of Christ, amen. amen. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Headley, which is the pastor of Zion Community Baptist Church. At this, at this time, we would have the presentation of colors. Color guard, hold, left, face, reason, arms.
At this time, we will have open remarks by Commander Milton Jones, Commander of NAVVEDS, Chapter 00102. Thanks, Wes. Part of the mission of the National Association for Black Veterans is to continue to highlight and amplify the contributions of African American and minorities uh, to the military. Uh, this event is part of that mission. Uh, we not only want to honor uh, the courage and contribution of these five men, uh, but we also want to acknowledge the contribution of the 58,000 plus souls that were lost in Vietnam as well as all of the uh, individuals who have died in conflicts on behalf of their country. Uh, we are so happy that those that were able to get back home safely were able to do that, uh, but uh, we also acknowledge that there were lots of other contributions. So we thank you so much for being here today, and I am going to uh, pass this back to Wes, who will continue the program, but again, uh, thank you for being here. Bundle up close together so you keep warm. <laughs> thank you, Milton. At this, at this time, we'll have the roll call by Winchester Square Vietnam veterans. Mr. Belton Tom, he is our Director of Veterans Services in the city of Springfield. Tom. memory of Negro men who gave their lives in Vietnam in the service of their country. Ronald C. Hurst, Gus Stovall Jr., David L. Owens, Norman C. Ferris, James C. Stearns. Can we have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Thank you, Director Belton. At this time, we will have the historic monument presentation by Mr. Skip Williams. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. My name is Skip Williams, for those who don't know me. I moved away from here, God, oh, 50 years ago. 50, 50, 15 years ago? 50 years ago. Now I'm going to tell you just how this monument became. Many years ago, I lived on 46 Pendleton Avenue. I had neighbors behind me, my neighbors. On one side was Stovall, on the other side was a hearse. I remember one day my father or mother picked up the paper and said, oh my God. He said, I can't remember whether it was the hearse or the Stovall. He said, uh, they, one just got killed in Vietnam. I said, oh my God. Then not too long after that, another member, my neighbor, he, he got killed over there. And it really, really bothered me. And I said to myself, my God, I said, these two guys went over there and they gave their lives. And, you know, God knows, you know, how many more would be the same. So I said to myself, I'm going to, here's what it, I intended it to be at first. It, this, it wasn't intended to be this. It was going to be, we were going to, I was going to raise money and donate a head of, of stone for each grave. That's what it intended to be, but all of a sudden, one by one, people started calling me up on the phone saying my brother or my cousin or my uncle or somebody passed away, got killed over there. So I said, no, we gotta do more than just headstone. We're gonna have to make a, something bigger out of this. At the time, I was promoting a lot of groups and 
groups and, and singers and dancers in Springfield here. And uh, I said to myself, I said, I gotta, I gotta get money for these guys. We gotta raise money. So the first, the first show we had was, you wouldn't believe it, classical junior high school. We got a full house, but the money we got, we had to end up using for another show. So we kept, we get, we got money, and then we lost money. We got money, and we got lost money. So finally, I, I, I said, my God, I said, we're, we're not gonna, we're, we're, we're always staying in the hole. Had a good friend, my good friend, God bless him, he's not here right now, Richie Sabini. We sat down talking, Richie, I said to Richie, I said, Richie, I said, the way I'm going now, it's gonna take us the next 50 years to earn money to put a monument or something. And he says, I'll tell you what, Skip. I said, what's that, Richie? He said, you can use my place. I said, oh, that's great. I said, uh, how much, you know, how much you gonna, you know, charge us for the thing? He said, what charge? He said, it's on the house. This great man. This great man. Sorry. Sorry, hang in there, He donated his club. He said to me, he said, Skip, he said, you can have this club as long as you want until you get the money to build a money. We started out with group. We asked, we put a word out and my phone stayed hot. Every group in Springfield wanted to be a part of it. Everybody. So the, at the time, the two leading groups in Springfield were called Bossmen and the Quotations. <laughs> it was a battle between groups. So both groups said, heck, yes, you can have our service. So we got, we did a show down at Syriacos. We figured, oh, we'll get about 25, 35, 40 people. We had to turn people away. It was like a small Motown down there. Do you hear me? People were asking, is it going to be a second show? No, we didn't plan for a second show, you know? So finally, uh, we finally um, ended up uh, doing the show. It was great. We got enough money and everything for the show and everything. That was great. Then the new groups came in. Oh, God, you wouldn't believe something. Uh, where's the, it, that, that uh, the box behind them? We had all kind of groups that come and get us. Now, here's, here's the main group who uh, really helped us out. Frank Hatchet Dances. Yes. Right. Smokey King in the Flames. Yeah. The Regals. Yeah. The Velvetts, the Laurelettes. But the main two women that helped me out the most was Miss Norma Ski and Miss Vivian Hayes. Techniques. We had, let's see, oh God, oh God, there were so many. Jerry Jordan, Prince Major, June Walker, Chucky Reed, Leonard Perry, Ronnie Swatzer, Darlene Francis, Rocky Robinson, hey! Jean Meadows and her crew, Johnny Slade, uh, Springfield Go Go Girls, the whole, even Holyoke came to help. <laughs> But like I said, the ones that, that were the best of all, that helped us out the most. And there was a group that, oh, the name, the name just stuck with me. They were called the North Atlantic Syndicate of Soul. I heard, now, you wouldn't believe it, but over half of these gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, have passed away. You know? And they, like I said, they gave me their time, their effort to raise money for this city. Um, I, the money that we got, like I said, we, we, we donated, we, there was a place down there called uh, Wells, uh, what was it called, Wells, uh, it's like a 
savings and loans. Credit union. Credit union. We put the money in there. And they kept the money for us for one year. We saved over a thousand dollars for the month. Over a thousand dollars. Back in those days, that was a lot of that was a lot of thousand dollars. So like I said, we got the money. We finally got the money up. You know, and uh, I came on here on my way back. I had my last I went to uh moved the way to uh Los Angeles, California. I got tied up with a Motown group there called the Originals. I was with them guys. I'm still with them. I've been with them about over 30 something years. We had two hits, Baby I'm For Real and The Bills. And uh, those guys, one of them wanted to come back with me with us. Uh, so he said next year, he wanted to come back next year. So that's what this, I, of all, I, I met a lot of people in here. I, uh, these were the sons, the grandsons, of, of the you know, the people that I knew that were here. Now, when I had the pleasure of meeting a gentleman when I first got here, one of the nicest guys I could meet. And every time I come here, it was a pleasure meeting him. And I met him again today, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'm telling you, one of the nicest gentlemen I can meet. We got a gentleman here, another gentleman that worked his butt off for this thing. If it wasn't for him, I mean, some of this stuff would have never gone. It's a Tony Bass. Oh, yeah. 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 Tony Bass. Thank God we have Tony Bass. So we got three, like I said, between Tony Bass, our great mayor, and Mr. Richie Sebelia, and all the great groups and singers and dancers everything that helped me out. God bless you all. Thank you for your help. I hope this is the last time I have to do something like this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. At this time, we'll have the significance of the monument by director Tom Belton. I, I got to remember something my brother Duke told me. And he said, Tommy, always remember to be humble. Tom, hey, you got to hold it My brother Duke told me, always to be humble, keep it short, and go on about your business. First, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out here this morning. You really have no idea how important this is to remember the sacrifices that these five individuals made for our community and the legacy of what veterans have done since then and will continue to do. Brief history. Hmm. I got back in 1969 and right over here where the Urban League used to be at, there were a number of us, about nine or ten of us, that were all experiencing the same problems but didn't know it. I would give off the roll call, but I might miss somebody's name, so I don't want to do that. But then again, I think it's important to recognize some of the faces that are here. It would be wrong if I didn't. My right-hand man from childhood, Adams Street in the South End, Mr. Competition for the Mayor with the Suits, Bernard McCluskey. <laughs> another gentleman who's my rear gunner, and that's Eugene Bryce. Yeah. I'm looking for my MIA, Thomas Hodge. That we grew up together in the same house, 63 and 65 Elmwood Street, and we were in Vietnam together. We all, along with Richie Terrell, yeah. Keith Friedman, local fellows who remember this as Winchester Square. Right. And as such, we formed a group in 1967 called the Winchester Square Vietnam Era Veterans. And the sole purpose was to make sure that the lives on this monument with 
always be remembered and that the activities that all Vietnam veterans did would always be memorialized. Yesterday I said something, I won't go back and say it again, and then I'm gone. We utter a lot of words during Vietnam Day, Vietnam Veterans Day. We utter a lot of words during Memorial Day. But we've got to do more than just utter words. We've got to live up to those words and to the commitments that we made to our veterans to care for them while they're in uniform, but most importantly, after they take that uniform off to extend them that same care. And I hope that the United States of America will step up to take care of all their veterans, not just the recently returning veterans, but all their veterans. I'm not a politician, so I'm passing the mic off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Director Felton. At this time, we would like for all the family members of the fallen who have given the ultimate sacrifice, please stand. Thank you all. We have the snowballs. We have the herbs. I think we have Paula, uh, Paula, Don, and ma'am, what family are you representing? The Stovall. Okay, we would like to pay homage to you all this morning and your loss. We will all be with you and we will all pray for you because I know every veteran's day it comes back to you. Thank you again and thank you for coming. At this time, I would like to ask all elected officials, uh, we will start in this order. Uh, it's not normally the proper order, but it's in this order. We will have City Councilor Justin Hertz, which is the nephew of our fallen brother, Mr. Hertz, come up. Then we will have Mayor Dominic Sano. <coughs> then we will have Ms. Katerie Walsh, City Councilor. Then we will have Bud Williams, which is the elect Levenhampton District representative. And after we will have retired representative Raymond Jordan. Would you come in that order, please? Thank you so much. It's an honor and privilege to be before you uh, this morning. I come to you having two roles, uh, one as a city councilor, and then one, as was said previously, as the nephew of Ronald Hurst. This is not about me. This is really about the brave men and women who have served our country. It's about those who have died in the line of duty and those who continue to serve to protect this great country and bring us the freedoms that we enjoy today. My father always said that, and, and he didn't talk much about his brother, uh, but he always said that I, I reminded him of Ronnie. And I never got the opportunity to meet Ronnie, but one thing I do know is that those were some big shoes to fill and that the expectations in the bar is set very high. And lastly, I remember my uncle, more by his gold star mother who would be at every event to honor her son and the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that he gave for this great country. And so while I pay homage to Ronnie this morning, I also want to acknowledge Jeanette Hurst his mother who passed away a few months ago and who if she could have she could have breathed she would have been here so thank you to you all and thank you to the families uh, of those who have died in the line of action thank you Councilor. 
Wes, thank you very much, and to the Stovall family, Steins family, to the Hearst family, thank you for being here to continue this legacy. To uh, Mr. Entertainment, my friend, Skip Williams, and Richie Sevilla, God rest your soul, is, is up there in heaven. Uh, this was, again, put together when uh, Skip thought it was only appropriate that we should honor those individuals that gave the ultimate sacrifice. You know, we just went through a presidential, tumultuous presidential election, and we are having an orderly transition. Unlike many other countries across the world, where many times transitions occur with violence, the transitions here occur in an orderly fashion. Why? Because of the sacrifices our veterans have made. And yesterday we had an outstanding Veterans Day parade, and I want to thank uh, Central, the Junior ROTC. Don't they look fantastic? It's been a round of applause. We had one of our biggest crowds ever here in the city of Springfield to honor our veterans, and then subsequently at the Veterans Cemetery in Agawam, where I spoke uh, also. I think it's lost many a times uh, with the Vietnam War. It was a misunderstood war. Um, these young men gave their lives the ultimate sacrifice. Many Vietnam veterans stand among us right now and today. And when those Vietnam veterans came back, they were not respected whatsoever. They were disrespected. They were spat upon. They were misunderstood. But yet, the other subsequent wars that we've had. Who took the lead to make sure that every veteran and their families, when they came back, were appropriately greeted and respected? Even though the ultimate sacrifice has been paid here, and veterans gave up their time to fight foreign wars, it was the Vietnam veteran that stepped forward and continues to step forward to make sure that our new veterans returning from Afghanistan and Iraq are properly thanked and respected. So with that, I salute you, Vietnam veterans, because you didn't have to do it. It wasn't done for you, but you never let it sour you. You wanted to do the right thing. So to all the individuals involved in this uh, monument, I think it's important. I know we celebrate Veterans Day, I know we celebrate Memorial Day, uh, but to a veteran, to a family member who's lost a loved one with the ultimate sacrifice, every day uh, is Veterans Day. And to our young people, I'm glad we see some that are here today. Remember, for all of us, be able to do what's right or wrong, it's only because of our veterans. God bless you, God bless your families, and God bless our city of Springfield. Thank you so, so much. Now we will have Ms. Walsh, our city councilor. Thank you, and good morning. I want to tell you what an honor it is to be asked to participate in this ceremony today, and how moved I am by your tribute to these fine young men who made the ultimate sacrifice. You know, I, I couldn't relate to the Vietnam War. As the wife of a decorated Marine, my husband Danny, the recipient of the Purple Heart, the Bronze Star, I know that Vietnam was 50 years ago, but the wounds have not healed. Vietnam is a war that continues to have victims, and I'm so happy that there are ceremonies like this that help with the healing and recognize what everybody went through when they, they were protecting our freedoms. They were over there because they believed in what America is all about and the way they were treated when they came home was abominable. And whenever I have the opportunity, I ask Vietnam veterans, <laughs> what was it like for you when you came home? I know Danny had a little different entrance into the country because he came back on the hospital ship repose. So that was a little bit different. He didn't go through what a lot of you went through, but I know all about PTSD and what our veterans have gone through.
so it's great to have this today. But for a mother to lose her son, as a mother of a Marine who, thank God, made it back safely after 24 years and seven deployments, uh, my heart goes out to these families and what you have suffered. So thank you for doing this today and healing the wounds. Thank you. State Representative-elect Bud Williams. Thank you, Wes. First, give an honor to God, Dr. Headley, the mayor. Uh, protocol has been set. And uh, stand up in with real mixed emotions. And Skippy, my adopted cousin, fantastic job. <laughs> and to my cousin, uh, Tony Bass, great job. Job well done, soldier. You know, I, I started reminiscing, and when Skip started uh, going through that whole uh, celebrity list. I saw Elaine uh, feet over to start moving. <laughs> I see Reggie Grant, uh, he used to be, I don't know what group he was with then, but uh, you know, we used to try to sneak in a lot of those things, Skip, you did, but uh, that one nobody tried to sneak in. Everybody paid. Everybody paid. You know, um, I'm very fortunate that uh, those names, the Hearst, Stovall, Stern, Owens, but especially to the Hearst name for this Stovall name. I came off the North End, and I was a North End celebrity. And I went to trade school. And you know, guys on the hill like to try to push you around up here, and you know what they do. They, they, kinda, they, they gang up on you. They don't go one on one here like we used to go to the South and the North End. They have like eight to one, ten to one. They had all. Uh, so, <laughs> but, what, but what happened, but what happened, Ronnie Hurst, Russ Stovall, and Ralph George, they adopted me at trade school. They adopted me at trade school, and they uh, became my posse. And nobody really ever messed with me up at trade school until I got on my feet and was able to establish myself. And I go way back with those gentlemen, and the day that um, the day that that word came through the community, it really, it, it vibrated through this community. It really, really did. It really, really did. It hurt a lot of people, a lot of tears. I don't think I've ever recovered from it. I don't think a lot of people ever, ever recovered from it. But those gentlemen gave the ultimate sacrifice, which was their lives, so that folks like me and other folks could serve this country as elected officials in their club that the transition of, of government. In the Vietnam War, uh, and to the brace grade who are here, that's part of the Civil War. So we're going way back, expanding you know, to this situation. But certainly, uh, if you count up those who were killed, those who were wounded, and those who were missing, there are over 150,000 individuals. 150,000 individuals. Think about it. The population of this city, which is about 155,000. Those are the number of individuals that were affected by this terrible, terrible war. But as the soldiers said, they tell you to go do the job, you go do the job. So to the families, I know you see you folks all the time. You have our prayers, but I keep a very special place in my heart for those individuals. And I really, really mean that. Uh, they were my protectors. Kept a lot of heat off me up here on the hill. A lot of heat. And I know Ray Jordan didn't like it, but they, they sure did. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more elected officials that I missed? Ray Jordan. Yeah, Ray. He wanted to come on, Ray. Ray said he didn't want to speak, but he's got to come up and say yes. something. Yes. To God be the glory, and to the glory of God be to all who have served currently and in the past, who will serve in the future. This is a very, very special occasion. And I would like to uh, point out a person that's really made a great sacrifice, who travels thousands of miles by plane, dog slip, track, <laughs> swimming. Yeah. He gets here all the time. Skip Williams. Yeah. 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 You always have to have a hook. And this is the hook. And so 
Cody Bass, he's the historian, he's got the history. I don't know if you've seen some of his videos from this event, but he's got them. He don't have one today. And what it is, is uh, taking place in history to all of those who made the ultimate sacrifice to the families that constantly should show up here to pay homage to what transpired. We applaud you. We applaud you. That is the ultimate sacrifice. And now I'm here following after the next state representative. Yeah. Buddy L. Wynn. Yeah. Of course, the boys are just going to do all the hard work. We blazed the trail. We blazed the trail here. <laughs> now you know them boys are coming in for something. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you. At this time, uh, we would like to have a few words from uh, Mr. Bennett Walsh, which is the superintendent of the Soldiers Home Holyoke Mass. Yeah. Mr. Walsh. Oh, okay. Well, at this time then, I would like to introduce some more of the people that are here. We have Mr. Dan Walsh which is a retired veteran service director of the city of Springfield. Yeah. Let's give him a hand. We have Mr. Calvin Walls, retired director of Veterans Memorial Cemetery. Yeah. Let's give him a hand. We have uh, Herberto Flores. Everybody knows Herbie. Let's give Herbie a hand. And we have the Elks Lodge number 61. Let's give them a hand, Bob Sweeney. And I would like to thank NAVVETS for putting this on, National yeah. Association yeah. of Black Veterans, which Tony Bass is a part of our organization. So we all worked hard to put this together this morning. And we would like to thank you again for coming. Now at this time, I would like to have Mr. Williams come back up, Skip Williams. He has a presentation that he would like to give to the families of the fallen. Mr. Wade. Uh, when I was in California, I had the uh, little presentation made for uh, one for each family. Now, could I have one member of uh, each family please come up here, please? Family of Ronald C. Hurst, please. I'd like to present you with this special mug with every person on there up there, the veteran in gold. And we'd like to present this to the family. Family of Gusto Ball Jr., U.S. Army. We'd like to present this to Family of Norman C. Ferris, U.S. Army. Please step up. Just don't drop these on your foot or break them. So we got this thing way time. John, Oh, okay. <laughs> David L. Owens, Lance Corporal, U.S. States Marine Corps. <laughs> Last but not least, James C. Stearns, Staff Sergeant, United States Air Force. 
Springfield Armory. Let's give them a hand. Uh, at this time, we're going to bring back uh, Mr. Belton. He would like to say something else. He said he was finished, but we know Tom. As I did my best to be brief and be gone, uh, I had to do an encore presentation. When we came together, there was a pecking order of returning veterans. And one of our returning veterans is a Bronze Star recipient who met with us, who's an extremely quiet giant. And I said, I cannot let the opportunity go by without acknowledging one of our decorated veterans within our group who helped us when we got started. And that's no other than friendlies, Donald Johnson. Where's he at? Raise your hand, Donald. Don Johnson was an icon, and he helped us strike our azimuth on how important it is for us to do these things. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, at this time, we would like to thank the Brace Brigade. Let's give a hand for the Brace Brigade. And the 54th Infantry. Yeah. Let's give a hand for the 54th Infantry. And we have some members here, some officers supporting Pastor Headley, her deacons, and her trustees. We would like to thank them for coming. Let's give them a hand. And last but not least, we would like to thank Major Keita and his ROTC yes. from Central yeah. High School. Yeah. Yeah. They are our next generation of soldiers coming up, and we thank them. At this time, we will have our closing prayer by the Reverend Dr. Barbara E. Headley. Truly be. God for those of us who are gathered here, that we may never forget the sacrifice. So as we begin in prayer, we live in prayer, and we end in prayer. Let us now pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the freedom you have given us, and for the price that was paid that we may live free. We remember today the cost of it all, the great sacrifice for freedom made by men and women of this nation, men and women who often in their own nation were not afforded the full extent of freedom and dignity, but who served honorably and with great hope that one day there would be true freedom for all. We honor them today. We honor those veterans from this community and state that gave their lives for our country through the Vietnam War, the Springfield Five. May their sacrifice and the sacrifice of others never be forgotten. We understand how our freedoms can be taken away. Give us an increased awareness of the battles we now face. Lord bless those who wear the uniform and those who have worn the uniform, who serve our cities, our nation, our people. Bless their families. Bless those they love. We thank you for the brave who have fought and continue to fight so courageously for our nation. For you have said that there's no greater love than for one to lay down one's life for others. Our veterans have laid down their lives for us and we are thankful to them. Be our, with our men and our women in uniform who serve our communities and nation every single day. 
We ask for your covering and blessing over them and their families. We pray that you would be gracious and encircle them with your peace. We ask that you provide their protection, that you be their guarding force who leads the way and their rare guard who keeps them safe from behind. We ask that you draw them in the midst, in the dangers that they face in the darkness of this world. When the voice of hate raises up against them, we ask that you will silence them. When the enemy plans to stir up, to cause them to stumble, we ask that you would walk all their plans. When the forces of evil rise up and strike them down, we ask that you protect them and surround them. Lord, we ask that you be with the wind that will be beneath their wings and the power behind their efforts and the heart behind their service. As they're on the front lines against evil in our world today and as they live out their lives after service with the memories, the woundedness, and the often unspoken pain of having served, help them to walk wisely, to say covered in your armor give them godly discernment help them to be men and women of prayer realizing this is where their greatest strength comes from help them to stay united and strong bold and resolute determined and unwavering we thank you O oh god for those lives may we live free and live honorable this is our prayer in the name of Christ, and all the people say Thank you, Reverend.